How's it going out there, YouTubers? Simon X Shark here with another new movie review for you. So let's get right into this review and see what it's about. Last week, I had the chance of watching an awesome and amazing, beautifully choreographed and gave such wonderful music and soundtrack to this film. And that is the awesome 80s lad film, Atomic Blonde. Now, Atomic Blonde, I was kind of skeptical going into seeing this because I'm not a big Charlize Theron fan. I don't think she's as great as everyone thinks she is. And I think ever since she won her Oscar for Monster, it kind of all gone to her head. And unfortunately, you know, with that, you know, majority of her movies I felt that have just kind of gone downhill. But this one, she brought back that kick-ass, you know, spontaneity again and made a decent film. Now, this awesome film, Atomic Blonde, is actually directed by an awesome director. Now, this awesome director was one of the co-directors of an awesome film as well. Now, this director is Mr. David Lynch. Now, David Lynch, we all recognize as, like I said, the co-director of an awesome action franchise, or the first film in the franchise series, of the awesome films John Wick. Now, even though David Lynch didn't get a credit on actually John Wick. He was one of the co-directors with Chad Stockowick and made such an amazing and awesome film. Now, John Wick is just one of the best like action series I've seen in a really long time. It makes me think of a lot like around the lines of like Beverly Hills Cop, uh, another 48 hours, 48 hours types of, you know, series or even the Lethal Weapons. It was just really well done and Keanu Reeves kicked ass in it. And uh, David made an amazing co-director on that film. Another film that the awesome David Leach is directing, and it's upcoming this year, and that's the awesome film Deadpool 2. Now, him taking the helm after the original director of the first film didn't come back should be interesting, because with how good Atomic Blonde was, I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of flavor and kind of style that David Leach puts it on Deadpool 2 because the first one was such a great movie and I, I can only imagine that with how good Atomic Blonde is I can imagine how good Deadpool 2 is going to be but other than that David Leach really has no other directing credits or really acting credits he's been mainly a stuntman for 20 plus years in various and big movies uh, but other than that I thought he did an amazing job with the film he had an awesome ass soundtrack he just made such great choreographed stunt sequences and just action sequences throughout the whole film. And that you could totally see that his stunt background kind of helped with that. And he just, he made an awesome film. I was really surprised at how well done I, that he made this film and how well I actually liked the film. Now this movie has an all-star and awesome cast. Now of course, like I said earlier, this is actually a Charlie Theron film. And Charlie Theron plays the main you know, antagonist or the main character uh, that's the atomic blonde character. And her character in the film was, you know, different and kind of interesting at the same time and really kicked ass. But a couple films that I really enjoyed Charlize Theron in that I thought were some of her better roles were, of course, her Oscar-nominated performance in the awesome film Monster, which she really did deserve that Oscar for that role because she really played and you thought she was Eileen Wernos. She really did a good job of that role. But at the same time, she it took her a time, you know, you know, a lot of acting and a lot of movies before she got to that film and made such a great impression and made an Oscar worthy type of performance. But at the same time, she just she embodied Eileen in that film and just it was a really well done, you know, uh, based on true story type of film. And I thought they did it very respectfully and very uh, you know, accurately too as well. Another film that she was in that I thought she was really decent in and really good and one of her better roles is an interesting like film that's based on a book series and that is the film Dark Places. Now this was a movie I'd never even heard of and my girlfriend actually said, she's like, oh this movie looks interesting, we should watch this. So I said, okay, so we checked it out and it ended up being a really decent, interesting film and it had a lot of great twists and plots in it, had Christina Hendricks in the film. And it just, it was an interesting film. And I thought Charlize Theron did a really good job of portraying the main character and bringing it to life and, you know, bringing this book to life too, which I thought was really well done. 
But in Atomic Blanche, like I said, Charlie Theron kicks ass. This was just an amazing film. Her action sequence is really awesome. And just all through the whole film, she was just really cool. And I really enjoyed her in the film. And I felt that this was kind of a role that was kind of redefining her again and kind of giving her a new light and a little bit of more bringing her back in the spotlight because I felt her performance at Mad Max Fury Road was really lackluster. And this film really brought back that luster she had before she did that film. And she just was really awesome in it. I really enjoyed her in it and I thought she, you know, did a really good job and kicked some butt. We also have in the film an awesome actor who I just think is one of the best actors around, and he's very versatile. He's just, he's a really good actor, and that's Mr. James McAvoy. Now, James McAvoy, you know, of course, everyone recognizes him as the younger Xavier, Charles Xavier, from the X-Men series. And, of course, we all recognize him, you know, from a list of other slew types of films. But a couple that I really enjoyed him and thought he was really good in, and one that I feel is particularly of great importance for how much of a good actor he is, is the film, the awesome M. Night Shyamalan film, Split. Now, Split really showed his acting ability, playing those different performances of all those 23 different personalities. He was so amazing in that film. He just, he brought those characters to life. He brought the horde to life. He just was embodied and became that character, and he, how ripped he got for the film, too, at the same time. He just looks awesome, and I really enjoyed him, and it, it, I just feel as he goes along and matures in his acting, he gets better and better, and a lot of his films, I feel, are really good, and Split is one of his best films, I think, to date, and just a really well-done performance, and I'm really looking forward to Glass that comes out next year. That should be interesting. Another awesome film that he was that in. That was an action film based kind of on a comic book series. And that is the film Wanted, which was a really well done film. And McAvoy was really awesome in it. I really enjoyed him in that too because I loved his personality in the film. And his like trying to learn these things and become like kind of like this badass character. He just was really cool. And he did a really good job in the film and just did a decent job. And it wasn't like he was... Uh, you know, like, new to the scene at the, really at the time. I mean, he, he had kind of a few acting credits from over in England. But at the same time, this film really kind of shot him to stardom. And I could see why, because he was really good in it. It just was a really well-done film. And it was, it was just awesome, and his performance was really good. So in the awesome film, Atomic Blonde, I absolutely loved his character in this film. His character was so, like, conceited and so, like, mystifying and just really awesome. I really enjoyed his character, and I loved how kind of the sleazebag he kind of played. And at the same time, though, I thought his performance was really intense at times, and you fell for him, and you were, like, you were rooting for him to be a good guy and all this kind of stuff. And you're just like, what's going on with him? What's, you know, what side is he actually on and stuff like that? And, you know, McAvoy did an amazing job playing this character and keeping you on your toes and not knowing where he was going or what he was actually doing. He did an amazing job and he was a great addition to the film. We also have in the film another awesome actress who is very, you know, just amazing dancer and just an amazing actress, I feel. And I think she's really blossomed over the last couple of years and just is becoming bigger and bigger. And that's Miss Sophia Batella. Now, Sophia Batella, we all recognize, of course, from a whole bunch of slew of, like, dancing films and, you know, doing choreographed things like that. And she was backup dancer for certain people and stuff like that. But a couple of films I really thought she was decent in, and that are kind of her kind of breakout roles, are such films as the awesome 2014 film, Kingsman The Secret Service, where she plays the awesome character with the knife feet. That was just really awesome, and her choreograph and her dancing skills really played off in that film and made it super awesome, and a lot of the fight scenes she was in were really sweet. She just was a really awesome, you know, chick in that, and... Just was really cool, you know, and I, I just absolutely think that's probably one of her best roles to date. And I just love that character. She just was really embodied that character and was just fun and interesting to see. Another film that she was in that was considered a box office bomb, which I think it was a fantastic film and a great reboot. And that is the reboot of the 2017 film, The Mummy. 
Now, she plays actually the mummy in this film, and I thought that was really interesting that they decided to go with a female mummy this time around. And she really was really good at the character. I love her expressions and just how she created the character and how she was very similar to me to Oksana Noon in the original Mummy films. And just she really embodied that character, and I thought she was a really good bad guy character. And... uh played the mummy really well and gave it a whole new light of, you know, it's just not male mummies, but it could be female mummies too at the same time. So I thought that was a really cool idea, and I thought she did a decent job in the film. But in The Awesome Atomic Blonde, she was really cool in the film, and I really enjoyed her character. It was kind of sweet and to the point, and kind of the love interest of Charlize Theron in the film, and you just kind of like, you enjoyed her and you felt bad for her at the same time because you were like root, kind of rooting for her too as well. And you just thought she was kind of just like interesting because she kind of just kept popping up in different spots. And you're like, what is this woman? Who is she really? And so you're kind of guessing throughout the whole entire film, like, what's going on with her? Why, why is she doing this? Why did she say this to Charlize Theron? You know, blah, blah, blah. But I thought she did a decent job and was a good addition to the film. Also in the film, we have an awesome other veteran actor who I absolutely love in pretty much everything he's in. I think he's amazing. He's just an awesome actor and dude. And that's Mr. John Goodman. Now, John Goodman we all recognize from such shows as Roseanne and from The Big Lebowski. But a couple of films I really enjoyed him and I think is one of my all-time favorite roles. Of course, is the 1990 horror film, Arachnophobia. That is my all-time favorite John Goodman role. He was absolutely hilarious as Delbert. He cracks me up. Every time I watch that movie, I cannot not help but to laugh at his character because he was just so stinking funny. I remember sitting in the theaters watching that back in 90 and just going, this guy is absolutely hilarious. Who is he? And I... Didn't really watch TV at the time, so I really wasn't familiar with Roseanne yet. And so I was like, watching, I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy's awesome. I hope he's in a whole bunch of other movies. And he just was so awesome, that film. And that's like when I fell in love with, you know, with his acting, because he was just so awesome. I absolutely love John Wood. I thought he was so awesome. Another awesome film of his was this awesome film from 2013 that is the ending and the third film in an awesome trilogy. And that is the awesome Hangover Part 3. Hangover Part 3 is just, I think, one of the best of the series. I absolutely love the bringing in of Marshall, the character that we've heard from the very first film. And that it all le leads together and all this you know, craziness with Mr. Chow goes on and stuff. And it just, it was a great ending to a great trilogy. And just John Goodman's presence film was so fun and hilarious. I absolutely loved him as Marshalls. So he always plays a really good kind of like bad guy or, uh, you know, like a m kind of boss kind of character. And he just plays it to the T always. And he was just really cool in that. But in The Awesome Atomic Blonde, I loved his character even more. He just was super cool. And at the same time, you're like, what is his actual motive? Where is he in this whole thing? What does he have to do with Charlie Theron? You know, he, he just was really, you know, awesome in the film. Really enjoyed him. Thought he was really cool. And I thought he did a decent job and I thought it was fun. He was a really great pleasure in the film and just did a really good job. A few other awesome honorable mentions that are awesome in the film are such people as the awesome Toby Jones, who we all recognize from like such films as Captain America, The First Avenger. Uh, he played Truman Capote one time. Uh, he just he's a really good bit actor, and he was a real he was real fun in the film too as well. Another awesome uh, extra that was a film an honorable mention is also the awesome Eddie Marzen, who we all recognize from a lot of the slew of like the Cornado films, you know, with uh, Shaun of the Dead, At World's End, and Hot Fuzz types of films. Uh, he's a big British actor, and I thought he was really fun in the film too as well. But if you're not familiar with what Atomic Blonde is about, basically the premise of the story is it's supposed to be 1989 uh, in, over in Moscow. And it's supposed to be, you know, when the, the Berlin Wall is going to be torn down and the Soviet Union is kind of like dissipating, you know, becoming what it is. And basically this assassin is over there and basically she's got to tell her side of the story of what was going on. And that's pretty much what the movie entails. It's about her story, what has entailed, where, why she's where she is, 
and you know basically what the consequences are and basically what happened it was a really interesting film like i said the soundtrack is amazing really awesome one of the best soundtracks i've heard in a long time uh just really well done the whole movie was so aesthetically and so awesomely directed lots of great graphics in the film the editing was amazing the you know the digital work was all really cool the action sequences were perfect just a really well done film and really enjoyable so that's it for this movie review guys as always thank you for watching thank you for liking and also thank you for subscribing and if this is your first time here or if you've been here before and haven't subscribed what are you waiting for hit that subscribe button so don't miss one of these awesome reviews or any of my awesome videos. And as always, keep your eyes out for any old or newer videos you might not have seen mine yet. And as always, check out that awesome link down below about the awesome Horror Pack. Now the Horror Pack is an awesome subscription service that comes right to your door of either four DVDs or four Blu-rays of horror random goodness. And also, these come with limited editions in each box that you can only get through the exclusive Horror Pack. And if you're interested in signing up, let me know down below in the comments so I can hook you up with a discount on your first month. That's right, discount people, yeah. And as always, catch you in the next one.